Dr. Decker, I'm mad. Why are you mad, Thomas? Because the American Heart Association is really grinding my gears. I don't know if you've seen, but that whole American Heart Association coming out with that report in USA Today that flat out said that coconut oil is bad. Now, I've been talking about coconut oil for years, touting its benefits from the lauric acid, the caprylic, the caproic, and the capric acid, really providing all kinds of benefits as MCTs, but also as, of course, powerful antimicrobials. And that's just one side of the equation. But you, being an amazing cardiologist that's on the board of the American Heart Association, yes. really can shed some light on this situation, on how saturated fats aren't necessarily what they're made out to be. So I'm gonna turn it to you. <laughs> well, when you're at American Heart Association functions, avoid the buffet. Let's just start there. <laughs> um, uh, it, you know, it's comical, we get mad, but it's really sad and it's very pathetic. It is. It's because people are gonna get hurt. Uh, you, you know, it's one thing to come out with these statements and, and, and to say, hey, here's something you really may want to think about. It's another to come out authoritarian and say something that isn't true. Yeah. Okay. Coconut oil is wonderful. Uh, it, it is. When we were all using butter, the food industry and the doctors got out and said, there's this wonderful thing called margarine. It's going to be easier and better for you because saturated fats are bad. Right. And why are saturated fats in every mammal? If they're bad, why are they in every All mammal? mammals are bad. That's right. And people were using lard and they weren't obese yeah. and they were using, you know, butter. We switch over to this trans fatty acid margarine. Every kind of chronic disease has increased since then. If you track our sugar intake and trans fatty acid intake, every form of chronic diseases went up. Two principal things, bad sugar, bad fats. But what, of course that's going to happen. Yeah. But what, what's the worst is an authority like the American Heart Association that we pay millions of tax dollars to said something that isn't true. Fats aren't as complex as they think. The more saturated, the more stable. And what I mean by stable is how they handle heat. Butter, heat stable. Lard, heat stable. Yes, uh, we do cook with lard in the Weiss household. We use an organic beef lard to cook with. We use coconut oil or we use butter. Those are the three things. You will not see spray oils I love olive oil, but I won't cook with olive oil because it breaks down into these trans fats. Uh, you have a right to be mad. You have a right to be disappointed. Uh, and USA Today going along and printing that, what, what, what happened to multiple sources? Like before printing it, who paid for that study? Right. Now, I'm not going to get into controversial stuff, but the food industry first started off by saying all fat's bad. So we're going to go to low fat diet. Everybody started taking out gallbladders because gallbladders need fat to work right, and our cancer went up, right? Just now it's like, oh, no, no, we can use margarine, right? We can use margarine, all right? Oh, by the way, low-fat generation gave us a lot of diabetes, too. Because yeah. there's no fat in these gummy bears. Of course. Well, there's like 8,000 grams of sugar, but there's no fat, see, so it's also, okay. They're so cute. They can't be bad. When I was in training, they used to hand out the gummy bears and say, see, they're fat-free. I'd be like, what are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah. And you, it was just full of sugar and all those crazy things. But they started off by saying no fat. Then they said, oh, these fats are okay. And the scientists are looking at going, these are trans fats. These are incredibly dangerous. Trans fats, people will be like, well, how much can you tolerate? Zero. Yeah. It, None. Zero. What zero you take in is what's going to stay. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, um, so to the listeners out there, I, you know, I share a seat in the American Heart Association. I have been in this industry for over 20 years. If you are having acute chest pain, a conventional cardiologist is a wonderful, wonderful person to be around. Chronic hypertension, things, really dangerous things. But when it comes to your kitchen, get the doctors out. Get the, the, the surgeons that wrote the cookbooks, get them out. Get all these doctors out of it and pay attention to people who are doing it on a daily basis, educating on a daily basis. We're not experts in it, we don't belong in it. Um, unfortunately, we endorsed it, and for the record, the American Heart Association did not ask me whether I would support that article, did not ask me to peer review it, because I would have slammed it, and I would have never let it been released. Well, before we wrap up the video too, you touched on something that was in talking about the stability of fats. And I just want to touch on this for one second because it comes down to a very important term, which is known as lipid peroxidation, mm -hmm. which is the idea of, you've heard of free radicals, right? You've heard of oxidative stress. And, and whether you know the full details of oxidative stress, we know that generally speaking, 
oxidative stress is bad. Oxidation is not really what we want to have happen. Well, when fats become oxidized, when they become unstable and they become occupied by free radicals, they are extremely dangerous. Why? Because, well, again, they're fats that are becoming essentially rancid. They're going to stay in your body longer. They're going to damage you longer. They're going to be harder to remove. And they're going to change bodily functions that really are critical to everyday life and survival. So when you're talking about the stability of fats, and mm -hmm. you're talking about keeping everything together and making sure that you're not having these unstable fats, we are literally talking about when you look at a jar of coconut oil, how it is solid when it's under 72 degrees. That shows you how stable it is. It's so stable, it becomes a solid. Yeah, it, it, I like that analogy, because I think that's good to educate patients with, which I will continue to endorse and recommend coconut oil to my patients. But heart disease, there's been this whole cholesterol argument, and, I, and it's really gotten blown out because it comes down to the exact issue, the exact issue that you brought up. There's only one form of truly dangerous cholesterol, oxidized cholesterol. And you can measure it in labs now. Cleveland Clinic does it, neuroscience does it, a lot of different labs will do it now. Oxidized cholesterol. When you're looking at you know, like cholesterol panels, there's some valuable information there. There's a vulnerability to oxidize. You don't really know whether you're oxidizing cholesterol until you measure it. But just like you're talking about whether it's cooking or the environment or whatever, the environment of the body, when cholesterol oxidizes, that's when heart disease occurs, dementia, cancers across the board. So I measure in my office oxidized cholesterol. Then I want oxidized cholesterol low but I want the rest of the cholesterol nice and high, protecting our brains from dementia, protecting us from cancer. And, and this idea of lowering all the cholesterol because you're gonna have some that's damaged has put our, our country into a state of, of quite a bit of illness. It is one of the main drivers, I think, of dementia in this country. So we're talking about the danger of this article. We're also going to increase dementia in this country because someone's going to look and go, you know, I was at a health food store and I saw this coconut oil. And all of a sudden I'm reading this and they're going to go back to oleo or yeah. canola or things that I would never have in my food cabinet, nor would any credible cardiologist that knows nutrition. God. I'm starting to think that maybe they want us to have Alzheimer's or dementia so that we don't remember that it's really good for them. Tom, I'm mad. Why are you mad? I'm mad at that article and I'm mad that cardiologists are letting people down. So we can both be mad together. We're are, mad together. Are you mad? And I know we are playing and we're having some fun with the whole being mad thing. I sincerely am irate about this, but make sure that you leave your opinion below because I'm very curious to hear what you have to say when it comes to the world of coconut oil. And as I've been saying, by and large, hashtag save the coconuts. See you soon.